Okay, sound check. <laughs> Welcome back to the Shimmy Show. A lot of you folks ask me why am I here, why I'm in Thailand, and today I'm going to answer that question. So, got my fast food microphone here. Give me two number nines, a number three with cheese. <laughs> now, I got my little nice uh, Japanese table here, so I'm situated to do the show properly, and I'm going to answer the question today about why I'm here, because I don't think the answer is very clear. You know, and I found something else out interesting too. The demographics of this channel are changing, which is surprising to me. I found that uh, more than half of my audience, for one, is women. And the other interesting tidbit is 57% of the audience here on the this channel is age 65 and up. And it never used to be that way. This channel used to be for uh, people under 30 and stuff like that for the most part. But the demographics have shifted in the last month or two, I guess, since I've been here and been doing Thailand videos. And that's very surprising to me. Well, it's all good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yay. <laughs> so let me get back to my little notepad here. This doesn't change the subject matter of the show or whatever, but I'm going to break it down here and explain to you guys why. Well, I should say to you girls, it is mostly girls again. Well, let's, let's see the stats here again on the page. I think it was, let's see what this numbers are. United States, 51% and gender, 57% female and age, 57% of you are 65 years and up. So, yeah. Well, thanks for watching, man. I guess I'm more entertaining than what's on the regular TV or whatever. Shit. Welcome to the Jimmy Show on my channel. Thanks for watching and all that good stuff, right? Or it could be you guys are just watching the girls' videos and stuff. I don't know what you guys are watching, but I'm going to do my best today to explain why Thailand, it, it works for me, and why I started coming here. And I've been coming here since 2015. I've been traveling to a lot of countries, and so far this has been my personal favorite. It's the place I decided to, you know, buy a little condo in and stuff like that if you follow the old episodes. And I'll break it down and tell you why I decided to do it. I have a whole notepad full of reasons here, so let's just go ahead and get into it, all right? Okay, so I, get, I think I'll also break this show down into two parts here. Uh, first, about why I'm here in Thailand, and the second half about how you can leave the West, kind of like a step-by-step -step process if you're in the U.S. or even the U.K. is the other secondary audience that watches a lot here. So a lot of people are stuck at square one and say to myself, like, uh, okay, Shemi, you got here. You're I'm 43 years old for you guys who don't know, but they asked me probably wondering, like, how do you go from living in say California to end up here in Pattaya, Thailand or whatever. And I'll explain a step-by-step -step process of how you can more or less leverage a lot of your own expenses and stuff and make the same move that I did. I'm not saying that my method will work for everybody, but I mean, I'm pretty basic, so it should really. <laughs> so it depends on uh, what level of uh, saving, sacrifice, or scrutiny you're willing to accept or what is socially acceptable to you or whatever too. So I'll just pretty much explain to you how I did it or whatever. But first, let me get into why I'm here. All right. First thing I noticed about Thailand when I come here, you know, most people, absolutely, they come here for the beach, the girls, the party, the nightlife, the massage shacks all up and down every road and street. And it's like, as they call it, Pattaya in particular is like an adult Disney World or Disneyland. And for the most part, that's pretty much the areas I have explored and I'm familiar with. And that's the area I live on the outskirts of right now. And I've explored a few other parts of Thailand, a few other, you know, islands and big cities, Bangkok, Phuket, all that other stuff, and a few other smaller islands and stuff like that. But I still did choose to make my home here because I, I think that in general, it's a good idea to live not too far away from where a lot of other foreigners live. You don't necessarily want to live out in a farm on the country, in any country, <laughs> that, I, that I, I don't recommend. That I recommend you being somewhere nearby where most people can speak and help and they're used to English speaking people are more or less familiarized with locals or whatever if you go to any kind of touristy area. So that's one reason. But I'll be backpedal and first start off about the reasons about why I think it's good to come here and why it could benefit you to come here. For one, if you're over 65, well, actually, if, even if you're over the age of 50, you're eligible for a retirement visa here in Thailand, which means you can pretty much come here and pay for the visa and never have to leave if you're over the age of 50. If you're under the age of 50 like me, you're stuck with either getting a tourist visa, which you have to renew every 30 days to 45 days. And uh, 
it's a process, but I, th I think the maximum you're allowed to stay is about four months out of the year as far as entering and exiting and extending and re-extending your stay and stuff like that. So I've never actually been here for longer than four months consecutively, you know, back and forth and all that because I haven't chosen to get other uh, longer stay visas. Now, say if you're even under 43, you're like me or whatever, you can also get an education visa. You could learn at a Thai English language school. You could get what they call a fighting visa, a Muay Thai school. A lot of those have things where they'll give you like a one-year visa if you're interested in learning Muay Thai, kickboxing, Thai boxing, whatever, you can get a one-year visa. It's only a couple hundred dollars, but you are required to go to the class, the course, the whatever you sign up for, right? And of course, there's always other immigrant business visa classes and stuff like that. But I would say that if you're under the age of 50, I would suggest to you, and you have the money and time, go get a tourist visa or the Muay Thai visa. It's my recommendation, yeah. Yeah, or the education visa. But if you're over 50, by all means, get the uh, get the retirement visa. So with that aside, though, again, why am I here? Well, living in both America and Canada for most of my life, right? You all can see me as I see my reflection on the screen here. You know, I'm me, I'm a black man, whatever. I often feel like in the West, it's like, I don't want to say that black people are at the bottom of this socioeconomic whatever dominance hierarchy thing or whatever but it is factual that black men are definitely hunted and targeted by many factions and forces in the west you know what i'm saying you live in a more or less a gestapo like police state where you're more likely to get harassed stopped pulled over by the police just you're more likely to be a victim of a crime and you're also more likely to be you know, in prison for crimes you didn't commit and stuff like that because you fit the description and stuff like that. This doesn't happen over here at all. Here in Thailand, I'm, I'm a foreigner and pretty much all foreigners are more or less cast into probably the same two or three categories. But in general, they know what foreigners are here for. They're here on holiday. They're here to go to the massage places. They're here with girls. They're pretty much here to spend money, basically. So that's the perception that if you speak English here, you're here to spend money and whatever, and they'll treat you as a tourist, more or less. Whereas in America, you know, despite my ethnic roots and stuff like that, I'm often treated as an outsider or an outcast. And to that, I say, you guys should have picked your own fucking cotton. You know, <laughs> what do you think the outcome's gonna be? So black people are here to stay in America and in some parts of Canada and stuff like that as well. But it's like, realistically now, it's like, why do you wanna continue to live in a country where you're constantly scrutinized on the media by this that oh there's a black guy he committed a crime the black guy did this the black guy did this and sure if actually they did but something's telling you that if a smaller portion of a population is doing something it's happening on a much larger scale by everyone else it just chooses what the camera chooses to focus on you know what i'm saying so you know you've got this negative perception of the bad evil black man <laughs> the gangster, the athlete, the rapper, the entertainer. You know, you have to fit into one of these like bubbles of uh, what people perceive you as, or you're, you're considered like a weirdo by everyone, including your own so-called people or whatever, right? So I've done many of these shows time and time again where I say black men are by default athletes and entertainers. It's almost like you're either an athlete or an entertainer or a criminal. Pick two out of those three and mix and match them or whatever. But that's how the world pretty much perceives you in the West, right? So you could either shoot basketballs, you could be a rapper, or you're a criminal more or less or something of that effect. You know, there's no mid medium middle ground for, oh, I'm a webmaster, I run a website, I do this, I'm a race car driver. Yeah, right, yeah. So that perception is like, it's thrown out the window. So I almost feel like I could more or less rather be closer to what I naturally am any goddamn way here. I'm just a tourist, I ride the motorcycle, I do my website nerd stuff, and I'm here, more or less, right? So, yeah. Now let's see here. The notepad, we got lots of interesting stuff here. <laughs> we'll get to this part about how, to, how I left the West and my own personal plan, which you guys can more or less use as a template paradigm or copy it if you feel like it, but let me get on some more about some things. Now, I don't really dislike America or Canada, but I mean, it's not my favorite places in the world. Again, I don't like turning on the TV and clicking through the channels 
and seeing just some thug niggers always robbing people, beating up people, stealing, robbing stores, this, that. And it's like, oh, is that all the, <laughs> that's all they choose to focus on, right? Yeah. And I'm not saying the shit's not actually happening, but to just be echoed that it's like, it, it's like a brain, it mentally just like drains my brain to the point where I can't even watch Western news like anymore. Cause I know it's like a movie, it's a script. Just like you folks are watching me right now on this YouTube or whatever this thing's uploaded to, the evening news is just the same. It's just another MP4 video file, right? The news is just an MP4 video file that's been ran through an editor that somebody uploaded on their own thing and they called it the news. This right here, me talking to you should be the real news, but you know how that goes, right? So whatever you cast in front of the audience is what people see and that's how they judge you more or less. So. I don't necessarily like the way that I am judged by the society that I was born in, so I choose to come here. Now here in Thailand, they might look at me and think that I'm a fucking rapper or athlete, and they might be halfway right or something like that. You know, stereotypes are generally true to a degree, but before all that, I'm still a tourist, first of all. They know that I'm here. I'm eventually going on a plane to leave and come back or whatever, but my stay is not one of uh, permanence or whatever. I'm not here to take over shit and stuff like that, more or less. So I think in general, as long as people have the notion in mind that you're here to spend money, you're here as a guest, you're here to this, they'll generally treat you well. And I don't feel that same level of treatment and respect in America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no matter what, no matter how much you pay, et cetera, et cetera, it doesn't matter. Yeah. and. Aside from the fact, uh, you know, like I say, I, I was living in Vegas for six months continuously the last year. The shit got very expensive, you know, you know, the rent to this, my bills and expenses are piling up. And it's like in America, at least for me, I'm having to work my business and work a job at night doing deliveries and shit like that in the Porsche, no less. And it's like, well, there's no end in sight to this. This is this. The wage treadmill of like trying to pay the rent is like, it's a ridiculous concept to me. Yeah. And I think that's the reason why I was really able to travel the world so much for the majority of my life, because I didn't have this gigantic overhead rent monster trying to like push back at me. You know what I'm saying? You know, paying like $2,000 a month for rent is like, it is insane unless you earn five times that or something like that. I'm used to being a landlord and collecting rent or whatever, right? So for me to jump back into the fire or the frying pan and have to start paying an insanely high amount of rent once again, it it just crushed me, man. I, I, I can't do it. And shout out goes to you folks who do this like day in, day out for decades and decades. It's very soul crushing and whatever, but it does suck. So unless you own your own home, own your own land and own your own property, and you're at least working and paying towards that, it's an absolute, I don't want to say a shit show. It's, it's a farce, man. It just, it doesn't add up to me. Yeah, man. The rent monster will crush you. Compound interest will crush you. Your debts, your credit cards, your utility bills, your fuel costs, all that stuff will conspire to work against you to crush you and keep you not even at the bottom, I'm talking like underground subterranean Ninja Turtle shit. Like you're not even gonna be able to even see the dawn light, right? In many circumstances. And you could be working damn near 24 hours a day. So once I figure out that something is like mathematically impossible to win, I quit playing because I figured the game is cheating. That's one thing I learned as a kid when playing Nintendo games or whatever. You know, you start playing a game for a while and the computer just keeps kicking your ass, kicking your ass, you're like, hey, this thing's cheating. Fuck this game. <laughs> Put in another cartridge. It's that simple. But some people, they can't eject that easily, right? They can't accept the fact that they are being scammed, that they're being, you know, the game is cheating and they're still playing a game while they're getting cheated. And I don't play that shit. So I'm quicker to walk away from something. I'm quicker to figure something out. Once I realize something's mathematically impossible to win, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. So that's the real basic reason why I'm here for economics and survival sake and also to not output all my hard earned money towards uh just paying somebody else rent it's ridiculous now if i owned another property in america or whatever you know i got a mortgage a house and shit there then i look at the ball game slightly different then i say okay well at least i'm paying to something that i own that at one day i can sell rent flip whatever i want to do with it right much like this place here that i own right so it's like 
it's a different feeling. It's a different sense. It's not money out the window. I'm buying an asset that is mine. I can pass it down to my kids. I can do this. I can sell it. I can buy it. I can paint it. I can do whatever I want because it belongs to me. But when you're just renting, man, shit, you know, now I will go back to America and I'll go and probably rent something till I can buy or something to that effect, but for a short while, but I won't like crush myself with the debt. That's all that I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So don't make renting a lifelong plan. That's a, that is most definitely a recipe for your failure and your body, soul, mind, car, everything else will wear out guaranteed i can like i would bet money on it so yeah renting is not the way to having a successful life so if you can alleviate this by being born into a rich family or having property grandfathered to you or even just working hard enough that you can buy your own little piece of property and start small if you have to shit buy a fucking trailer if you have to i don't care you know do what you gotta do so that's how you can come up so now let me get to part two before i Start on the ramble mode here. Let me get a drink here real quick. I like lychee or lychee, by the way. Ah, damn, this is good. All right, so a little bit of my notepad here about how to leave the West or how you can leave the West or at least how I left the West, right? There's a lot of videos on YouTube. I look at this stuff or at least my algorithm that people be like, oh, like, subscribe to my channel algorithm, thumbs up and all that shit. <laughs> There are people living and sleeping in their cars. It's actually like a new YouTube trend where people are buying minivans like, I guess like Dodge Astro vans or cargo vans or something to that effect or mail trucks and school buses. And instead of paying a landlord rent, they're literally like sleeping in their like Walmart parking lot in a minivan or something to that effect. I don't advise this for a variety of reasons. Although I do, I do say that they are, they are on the right track for They've kind of sort of got it figured out. That's the, I'm not advising anybody to go and do that shit. I don't suggest you sleep in a van or a car or a truck. I've been a truck driver before, you know, the big rigs or whatever, and they have sleeper berths in the back with bunk beds and stuff. But no matter how you factor it, you're sleeping in an eight foot by eight foot fiberglass box. And you do that in a car, it's, that's not even enough room to walk around or whatever. Who are you kidding or fooling, man? That's not healthy, it's not safe. It's probably not sanitary and sure you're saving money, but at what expense, right? So there are alternate solutions that I want to bring up. Okay. Now let's say that you're one of these people that you don't want to live with your parents or you can't, I don't blame you, right? You shouldn't any goddamn way if you're an adult. So <laughs> don't go and sleep in a van. Okay. If you are unable to get even a small studio apartment for a variety of reasons, maybe you have no credit or questionable employment, or you're self-employed, or something to that effect, a lot of people are not gonna rent to you, all right? I personally didn't find this out, that you actually needed credit to be a renter until I was damn near, I think 28, 29, 30 years old or something. You know, by the time I get divorced or whatever, I had always owned my own home. I've owned my own home since I was 19 years old. I've owned two homes at that particular time get divorced, go back to America, I try to rent an apartment, and they're like, oh, your credit's, you know, 600, whatever, we can't rent to you. I'm like, oh, oh, your employment, oh, you're self-employed? Oh, no, yeah, we can't rent to you like that. So you might even be blackballed out of low-income housing simply because you have a low credit score or no rental history. They don't care that you work for yourself. That's not a valid so-called employment history and stuff like that for many people as far as a tenant screening application is concerned or whatever, right? So I'm dedicating this show to you folks here that might not even know how to get from step one to step 10. Okay, let's go back to step one, all right? Let's say you can't get an apartment. Your options are, and you can't, let's say you're like a type of person, you can't live with other people. You know, and that's understandable too. I'm pretty much kind of like that too, right? Whatever you do, don't sleep in your car, <laughs> okay? As a backup plan, you could become a truck driver and work and live and sleep in your truck and stuff like that over the road if, you, if you're a single person and stuff like that. But truck driving is a dangerous job. You fall asleep at the wheel, you're dead, stuff like that. Not for everybody, it's a cowboy profession, right? So here's what I've done, or at least what I stumbled upon. Uh, I've, I've had about, I think six or seven, maybe more commercial office spaces in my lifetime, right? I've rented everything from uh, medical building offices to a carpet warehouse to you name it, 
I've probably had it or whatever, and I'll probably get more because I realized something a long time ago that uh, if you try to go rent a commercial property, oftentimes they don't run your credit or they don't check your credit and they're just looking to put a tenant in there and it's just an office space or whatever. And if you do work for yourself, you're pretty much working all the time anyway. I'm not suggesting you go ahead and full on move in there and put in your bedroom furniture and all that kind of stuff in a commercial office space. But one thing I have noticed about Eastern people in particular, Africans, Asians, etc., is that most often or not, they live and work in their shop, right? If you go to any hood in America, at least the ones I grew up in in California, say your corner Arab liquor store, the guy's got a corner store downstairs. His whole family lives upstairs right above the store. His wife and seven kids and whoever else. And they work and run the corner store. Same thing in Spanish countries. Dominican Republic, the so-called Colmados, the corner store. They live and work in the same place. That way they don't have to leave their house to make a dollar. Here in Thailand, it's very much the same thing. A lot of the uh, massage girls rent what they call shop houses, which are basically like a kind of like what I'm in here, but like a three or four story, very thin vertical building. It might have 15 or 20 rooms in it or whatever, right? But the bottom floor is a shop and they live on the next floor or two. And they might even do laundry on the rooftop and dry it there, who knows? But my point is they don't have to leave the building in order to make a dollar. They're not renting their office space and also having a house separately to pay for. So. You can save a lot of money, especially if you're a internet worker or just work for yourself or sell shit, or even if you just want to open up a corner store where you just sell water and soda and, you know, cigarettes or something like that. You can do pretty good for yourself if you do this method, right? And oftentimes you can rent these office spaces. Just go look on your local marketplace or Craigslist or whatever. 500 bucks or less. Some, I've had some offices for as low as $100, $200 a month, you know, but... 500 to a thousand dollars gets you something generally pretty nice right and usually you have something in a secure neighborhood roll down door keypad entry you know a lot of times you have a garage storage space it's your world and there's no rules saying that you can or can't do this so long as you have 24 hour access to a place or whatever if you want to get fancy you can get two or three of these little places for the price of your apartment or whatever but you get my point there is one option you have for you to save money have somewhere to live and people say, well, where do you go shower at and stuff like that? Get a gym membership if you have to. Go to your local, uh, what do they call them? LA Fitness or Bally's or whatever they have nearby you and do all your showering and work out there while you're at it. Use their hot tub, use their pool. I've done it for many a years and that's how I've gotten ahead as an entrepreneur. If you guys look at my old movies, if you look at, uh, what was that particular series? Uh, there was actually a series I did in Florida, uh, in Orlando at my office space called Rent Money Girls, a DVD series a long time ago, 10 years ago. And you can see most of these things I filmed in my office space, literally, you know? So it's like, whatever, do whatever you have to do in order to save a buck and make a buck or whatever, because money saved is money earned, you know? And if you're throwing out all your money to rent just so you can live in like a more or less like an upscale type of, uh, neighborhood it's like okay but you don't have any money to grow your business you have no money to travel you have no money for food no money for gas no money for clothes if you're you know if you're tight like that all your money's going to your rent or your landlord so i think that's a really big first step in getting your financial independence if you're starting from square one you know what i'm saying you have to break the cycle of programming that you have to have this place and this place and you have to have this car and you have to have this job and you have to have all these unnecessary insurances and stuff to keep you broke because that's literally what's going to keep you stuck and stranded in America where you are right now if you're watching this channel. So the stats say, or UK or wherever you may be at or whatever, right? So that is probably my best two cents of advice of how you can start from square one or say you're even living with your parents or you're doing this or you're, you know what I'm saying? Your job don't pay you that much. You could even do this method or plan right here. Even if you had like a minimum wage job, even if you're like door dashing or doing this shit, delivery food, uh, fuck was it? Uber eats and that kind of stuff. Grubhub, whatever they call it. You could be doing all that. You could stack your money up and then go back to your office space that you're renting for literally 10, $15 a day. <laughs> you can go shower at the gym and have a leisurely life and have all your stuff working there. And for the for guys who you guys who don't know here, most of the time you rent a commercial office space, it includes all your utilities, 
you get mail. I had a fucking secretary. You got a little kitchen, a conference room. Depends on where you go, of course. But I'm just saying, it's like all this stuff is included and ready to go plug and play. You go and get an apartment, you got to go put down a deposit for your utilities. Hook up the internet. Put a deposit for that. Do this. Do that. Do that. Money out the window, which you probably don't got, and that's money you could be applying towards your plane ticket to coming here. So... I bring it up because I'm just saying to you folks out there, you don't have to wait until you're retired to whatever this age might be (laughs) where they keep kicking it down the road in order to make a move is all that I'm saying. So it might actually be a blessing to a lot of you that you don't actually have a whole lot of stuff to hold on to. That means you don't have a lot of stuff holding you down either. So, you know, once you can alleviate your debts, your car payments, your unnecessary insurances, your this, your that, your bills, you're lightweight and you're free to go. Yeah, so that's more or less like how I did it, really. That's how I I got a foothold. That's how I was able to fund and film my own movies and do all this like cool shit over the last decade and more because I did not have the rent monster crushing down on me. (laughs) So for me to jump back into this frying pan for the last six months, I'm like, shit, man, by the third, fourth month, I'm like, this is... This is a bit too much for me, man. I don't know how, I don't know how you guys do this shit for decades. Soul crushing. Fuck that. (laughs) You know, (laughs) how is this? I'm being the boss and I got to work too and I don't have enough to make ends? Oh, no. (laughs) So let me go and reconfigure my plan or whatever. And that's more or less what I got to do here. So that's what I'm doing here. The other good reason about coming to Thailand here is um, you save a lot of money. I'm recovering a lot of my debts. I got a bike in the shop, car in the shop. I'm shipping my shit coast to coast and stuff like that while I'm here. Simply because my expenses are so low here. My overhead is so low. The food is inexpensive. The drink is inexpensive. My place I own, it's inexpensive. The motorcycle, I got a new bike now. The bike's inexpensive. Gas is inexpensive. Go back to America before I left. I know gas is a little bit lower now, but prior to me leaving, gas is damn near $6 a gallon. What? Utility bill was three fifty a month last last uh, time I left here, you know, in uh, Vegas. Not to mention the fact that it seems like they're just shooting up everything like Grand Theft Auto every time I turn the news on there. I mean, you can grocery stores getting shot up, public meetings, rallies, concerts, too much, too much like bullshit going on. That does not happen here. I don't see it happening, or at least I don't hear about it. If it is, it's not happening to the tourists, at least. So, you know, there's the there, there's some weird occurrences that happen here in the tourist area. But again, you don't have to necessarily go out that way if you don't want to. There's way more cool shit to see. I know there was one article in the, in the newspaper last week where some girl bit off a guy's ear on a bus here because <laughs> she said no to him or something. I'll try to put a link to that up on the page. But other than weird occurrences like that and like petty pickpocketing and shit like that, I mean, there's not... Let's see. The only bad thing that's happened to me since I've been here, I've been here now uh, about two months or something like that. Uh, let's see. A dude asked me for some money to park my motorcycle near by the beach. I was like, nah, man, I ain't got no money for you like that. Fuck that. Right. I don't, I'm not giving money to a girl. I'm damn sure not giving it to a nigger. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, I go do my morning run and come back and think nothing of it or whatever. Next day, I parked the bike in the same type of area and my helmet stolen, you know, that kind of shit. So, I mean, there's like some little petty, petty get back or territorial kind of shit going on there sometimes in the touristy areas. But I mean, aside from that, that ain't nothing, man. That ain't nothing compared to the States. In America, black men such as myself, you're being hunted down by the police day in, day out. Check your license, check your tags, check your window tint. It's not too dark, is it? That kind of... <laughs> I even got pulled over while doing the uh, delivery door dashing shit, while delivering pizzas and shit and stuff like that. So it's like, I don't feel like I can escape the scrutiny of having black skin. There is a reason, if you look at my older videos, there's a reason my windows have 5% limo tint on them. You know, I don't want people to see that I'm a black man driving a Porsche, etc. There's a reason why I drive with my sun visor down and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So there are certain hazards that come to living in America. I mean, I feel like if you're a black, literally you are targeted by law enforcement. No doubt. No doubt, especially if there's more than one of you in the car. But I mean, even still, I don't like that feeling. It's not a safe sensation. I don't feel safe in America all the time. I do feel safe here and comfortable here as well. So a lot of you folks, maybe you cannot relate to that. I don't know how many black men in particular listen to my channel, but I mean, 
you know, it, it is what it is, right? I don't feel, you know, this folks, you, you ain't got to be strapped when you leave the house here, okay? It's not like, it's not that kind of a video game world here. So, you know, living in a world in America where I've been like gang stalked and followed and all this other kind of weird shit because of the profession that I'm in and stuff like that, it's nice to get a break for coming here and just having shit chill, right? No natural enemies is a big thing, right? I'm not worried about some other brother, you know, getting mad at me because I look like I'm living better or even worse or whatever than him. Or they might be jealous for a variety of reasons, right? So I don't get that here. In America, it's some other story. You know, you might be shining too hard, you know, nigga. I might just have on a pair of sunglasses or whatever. The nigga might think I'm wealthy or something. So it's like, it's the perception of stuff. Would it just be safe to say that I don't necessarily feel safe or do I fit in in all parts of America? Whereas here, I definitely feel like I'm, I fit in as a tourist, which is good enough for me, right? I'd rather be perceived as a tourist than to be perceived as a threat, to be perceived as somebody that's violent, crazy, all the, you hear the comments, oh, he's sexist, he's a this, misogynist, he's a toxic man, all, <laughs> all that kind of shit. <laughs> you talking all that bullshit, you know? So that's that's my take on why I like it here. You know, I'm just, they, they don't even speak the same language as me for the most part here, right? So I'm just another gringo, farang, falang, farang, farang dam here to spend spend some dollars and it's all good all good in the hood and i'm happy about that so again uh, i won't drag this on too long maybe i'll make a part two about this maybe i if you guys have any questions about how i left the west america and how maybe you have a question of maybe the situation you're in i'll get back to you if you want to bounce me some back and forth or whatever and i'll do some comments about that and again this video is targeted towards again the audience that's watching it currently at least this month it's been the 65 and up crowd so you know, you guys probably have more wisdom and knowledge than me. So please do give me some insight. I do have open ears. I listen. You know, I don't close off my ears to all that. I think it's a very bad thing to reject information that's useful from experienced and credible people. But just because you're older doesn't necessarily mean that you have more experience or credible. You know what I'm saying? I take advice from successful, experienced people regardless of their age and all that other stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? But really, that's what I'm talking about on this channel here. If you have any questions about Thailand, the tourist visas, traveling requirements, buying property, shit like that, I'm all ears. I can probably help you with that, but I'm not a know-it-all. If I do not know the answer to something, I'm not gonna say that I do. But if I've done it, I can tell you how I did it more or less. So hit me up below in the description comments. If you wanna support me also, hit that little thing called link tree in the description link tree slash shimmy cash whatever if you want to support my work you can uh, you want some entertainment buy my movies i want your money look me up on the link tree shimmy cash i'm known for the series toticos indian girls white girl cops just google me your google shimmy cash and you'll find my movies more or less so that's how you can support me if you want all that 18 plus stuff and that's all i gotta say so have a good day i'm gonna drink my juice here have some food, go to the market across the street. And I'll be happy to do some more videos if you guys have any suggestions about, you know, other cool stuff to do in Thailand, be it motorcycle racing, the tourist stuff, uh, you know, just or just want my take on something, hit me up and I'll get back to you. And uh, that's all I got to say. Shimmy Cash, and I'm signing out. Thank you for watching. All right, ciao.